podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yo, 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 welcome to Call Camp, everyone. Steve Richard here, joined by Dad Burmeister and Jared from Ambition. We've got a really good one today. Um, I'll tell you what, if you listen to that 50 cents and it doesn't get you fired up, I just don't think that you're breathing. We're about to listen to incredible calls, and the lessons that Chad and Jared are bringing are as, as tangible and concrete as you can possibly get. This is stuff that you're going to use to Im instantaneously improve the, the percentage of calls you connect with to, to appointments and demos. It's going to be just instant improvement if you implement what you learn. So uh, like I said, Chad, I feel like this is Christmas morning. It doesn't get a whole lot better than this. Chad, in the club. Nice. say hello. It, we're in the club, so welcome to the uh, Call Clamp Club. Great to be here, Steve. Awesome. And, uh, and Jared, what do you have to say? Uh, it's hard not to be fired up with, with 50 Cent after, you know, Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, coming up back from lunch. So it's a great way to kick off the call. There it is. There it is. We got all of our, all of our Twitter handles below, so if you hear – one of these knuckleheads say something relevant, uh, please sh uh, throw out a tweet and, and share it with your community or, uh, or a post on LinkedIn. A little bit of background, Chad's VP of sales at Talent Reef. He's also the author of uh, Sales Hack, several books and a blog, um, really under the moniker Sales Hack. Fantastic content. Recommend you check it out. Um, it's all free stuff. And then Ambition, uh, Jared's the founder of a company called Ambition. Um, they're a, a platform for activity, sales activity management that we actually use at my company at Exec Vision. Uh, it does a lot of really great things for us, and it's great. The managers actually said, we want this, as opposed to having to push it on them. So we love Ambition, big fans. Also, thanks to our friends at Connect and Sell, Chris Beal and James out there. You guys are awesome. If it wasn't for their technology and Chad's teams using their technology, we wouldn't have all these amazing call samples. It's a... Uh, it uh, lets you get lots and lots of conversations in a very short amount of time to exponentially grow revenue. So very cool. Check out Connect and Sell what they're doing. Chad, transition to you. So when we, you and I were talking about this webinar and this call camp and, and you told me, I want to do catch them at hello. I, I, right off the bat, I went, ooh, I like that. So talk to me about the topic. What are you thinking here? Man, every conversation has a funnel. It's just like when you're running a pipeline. You put people into your pipeline and not all of them get to close. The same thing happens with conversations. You want to widen the top of the funnel. That's what catch them at hello is. When I used to go with a friend of mine to bars 20 years ago, he never could get them at hello. <laughs> so he always needed a wingman. Um, you've got to be crisp in your first 30 seconds of your conversation or you'll crash and burn and you'll be like all the other social sales weenies that are out there and say that cold calling doesn't work and you'll default to the easy, which is email, and then email gets clogged up and then you'll have to go to video and then that'll get clogged up. And now guess what? Conversations are back. So it's really exciting. Catch them at hello. So here's how you do it, right? Hey, this is Chad Burmeister, Vice President of Sales at Talent Reef. I realize I'm interruption. Do you have 27 seconds so I could tell you why I called? To be honest with you, I tried that one here. I used to use that calling sales and marketing leaders. I didn't get the 94% conversion rate, so I was losing them at hello. I learned within 10 or 15 conversations that that wasn't going to work for me. So I quickly pivoted to the next one that says, hi, this is Chad Burmeister, Vice President of Sales at Talent Reef. Did I catch you at an okay time? And you want to be kind of down on your time. Uh, I was working with Chris Beal in a four-hour strategy session the other day, and it's not okay time. You don't want to go up on the tone. You want to go down on the tone at the end. I kind of go neutral. 
Um, it's interesting. I have no idea why that is, but it works, and that's the bottom line. I've taught this to the team. We see a 94% rate where they say, uh, not really, but go ahead. Or sure, you got me at a good time. By being polite and asking for permission to continue, you get the ability to go into what's next. Hey, hey, what's Chad, next? hey yeah. Chad, hold on on that real quick, because that's an interesting one, the up speak versus down speak. I love that notion of don't say, did I catch an okay time? But did I catch an okay time? Where you go with the down speak, it's more empathetic, I guess. But Jared, you had a counterpoint here. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. It's hard to definitely hard to argue with 94% you know, permission to continue. But imagine just a strike through, I think, through that okay before time and changing that to, you know, we as humans don't like being cold called. So our natural inclination is to say, well, no, I don't have time. I'm, I'm, I'm very busy. So just what we did is we changed that to bad time and people are, are ready to say no. So it basically gives you permission to continue, which, which we found a lot of success with. That, so that's fascinating. We're going to come to a poll on that in a second here. But So now, Chad, take it back up. So let's pretend you got permission to continue. What happens next? Yeah, so the next thing is you want to be concise with what your value proposition is, right? Practice it. Run it by others. You can't be flimsy in your value proposition. I've always called it a shocking value statement. And I also like factor eight swift intro, which is so what's in it for me. So at a high level, be concise, couple sentences, be empathetic, right? You caught them in an off time. Tonality matters. If you're calling an IT department, maybe it's okay to say, hi, how are you doing today? And be monotone because that's what they're used to hearing. But if you're calling a VP of sales or marketing, you have to speak in a different way. If you're calling an HR person, it's a different conversation. It also varies by persona. Remember, the 27 seconds works for VP of sales and marketing. It doesn't work for HR people. Mm. And the last point, if you're a leader in sales leadership, it's your responsibility to make sure that your team doesn't drift. Um, I've seen it time and time again in hundreds of companies that I go into, and within a couple of days, you teach them how to ride a bike, and then they decide that they'd like to re-engineer the entire process. 94% is hard to argue with. If you can show me something that's working that gets you to 94%, fine. Otherwise, if you're getting to 50%, you're going to tell me cold calling doesn't work and you're not going to be a fan of having conversations. So be careful of drift, whether you're a rep or a leader. That's a, such a true point. You see that drift happen all the time. So uh, let's let's start with that. That's a, This is a good opportunity to engage the folks that are out there, everyone out there listening. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to have you vote if I can figure out how to work the dang software. Hang on here. All right. So do you ask for permission to continue? All right. Launch. I think I did this. You guys see it on your screen? Did it pop up? Looking good. Hey, yeah, hey look at that. Not quite like the referendum that passed in California a few years ago, but still impactful. So, and hey, uh, while this is going, Steve, the calls are just around the corner. Um, just to kind of tee up the punchline here, by the end of this call, you're going to learn how to convert conversations from cold outreach at a similar level that you would convert to your inbound web leads where they're asking you to have a conversation with them. That, that took me five years to figure out and learn. <laughs> And uh, we're going to share it with you today. It's really powerful. Wow. 76% voted here. And, and we've got 74% of the people are saying, yes, they ask for permission, continue, versus 26% say, no, I just jump right into it. So, hey, everyone, 78% voting. That's really well done. Bravo. Thanks for, thanks for voting here. Thanks for doing that poll. Um, can you guys still see my screen? Yep, we yes, sir. Okay, great. Speaking of our friends at Factor 8, Lauren Bailey and company, and Steve and Regina and everybody else, Kelly, um, talk for a minute about the, the shocking value Swift intro. Let's plow through this and we'll get to the calls. Yeah, be Swift, right? Swift, Swift means what's in it, so what's in it for me, right? You've heard of W2FM, what's in it for me. Your buyers want to know why the heck are you calling them? Don't make it about you. Who are you? What do you want? And what's in it for them? right? Our company helps companies like yours do what? We help VPs of sales do what? And be concise. What's in it for them? Um, 
Don't say, hey, I'm just calling to introduce myself. I wanted to touch base with you. Are you the person that does purchasing for your company around blah, blah, blah? Give them a value statement, right? We help companies eliminate their spend on job boards. We help you reduce turnover by 40%. And finally, we help you get tens of thousands of dollars in work opportunity tax credits so that we actually pay you to be a Talent Reef customer. Like that's a shocking value statement and it's Swift intro, be Swift. So here's an example of maybe one that's okay, but probably wouldn't get my attention. Just dropping you a quick note to see if you're in the market for outsourcing your lead generation. No, this was when I was at Ring Central. It turns out I run a lead generation department. Why would I want to outsource it? No. So it's just, it's not what you do, right? <laughs> So I kind of alluded to this. This is one for the C-level, the owner, and the president. Again, we watch Drift. So especially if you're a new salesperson to Talent Reef, we're going to ask you to be within 80% or 90% of this message to begin with. Over time, you can drift, but I want you to make this your talk track in the beginning. Hi, this is Chad Burmeister calling with Talent Reef. Did I reach you at an okay time? Um, somebody challenged me on catch versus reach, and I've been trying reach, and it seems to work. <laughs> So I like that. Um, I partner with C-level executives, Steve, like yourself, to deliver a software solution. Notice we say software solution, because otherwise the customer may not understand. We help you reduce annual turnover of your hourly workforce by typically 40% across 70,000 clients. We help you eliminate tens of thousands of dollars in annual job board spend. And finally, we automate your hiring process. So it's easy for managers, easy for your people that are, that are applying. Where is your company in these areas? Yeah. That's the C-level owner conversation. And if you, any any com color commentary there, Steve or Jared? Sure. Uh, I think the big thing, like right now, and going back to that last slide, especially for C-level and for everybody really, is it is it's budget season and it's initiative planning season. So just, you know, make it relevant to the time as well. Like everything right now is on the table in my opinion, and it's really easy to get a conversation. So I love this layout, it's perfect, Chad. And I would maybe at the end, like, where's your company's areas? It's like, what are you thinking about changing for 2018? That's really what these C-level folks are talking about right now. And I think that's just a, a slight tweak to the close um, because it's always relevant when we're talking in quarter four. Beautiful. Okay. What do you think about changing in 2018? Go ahead, Chad. Let's talk about that. And, uh, you know, slight variation for HR people. Um, you know, this is more director of HR, manager of HR. They may not be looking at 40% reduction annual turnover. They're more focused on what's right in front of them, right? They're on the ground level. I'm calling today because we're helping HR executives like yourself migrate and consolidate their legacy recruiting onboard process to a fully automated cloud-based solution which ultimately gives you more control over your hiring, onboarding, and retention. Um, what are you folks doing in this area, or what are your plans for 2018? Let's try to use that. <laughs> I, I, everybody's plan in 2018, so I think it works for HR or C-level. Yeah, it, it's perfect. great. And the, and the key being here is the you tailor the message based on the level of the individual. The C-level is having a slightly different version of the message than the mid-level because they obviously care about different things that goes without saying. So let's talk about this research here. There's some interesting research from, uh, and, and you learned this from someone, Tom Snyder, right, Chad? Yeah, Funnel Clarity, what an amazing organization. They really help you understand your funnel, your process, and how to add velocity to it. So in a recent conversation that I did with him and a lot of his customers, um, you know, only 3% of the market's actively buying you for your product right now. And 40% may be poised to begin, just like Jared said, they're looking at 2018 and what they're going to do. And 57% may just be immovable right now, right? They're, look, leave me alone. I'm busy. And you'll hear all three of these types of calls today. The difference between the winners and the losers, the losers only go after actively buying. Oh, you're not ready to buy next week. Oh, sorry. Okay, bye. And then they downgrade the lead. The winners go after the poise to begin bucket. So I think Steve's going to share with you a little bit of data here that's pretty compelling. Super compelling. So um, if you look at a typical organization at a percentage of conversation to appointment rate, and this is exactly how we promoted this, you typically see that number hover between, guess what, surprise, surprise, 2 and 3%, which is so fascinating because the research that was surfaced by Funnel Clarity, and it was originally done by Chet Holmes, uh, who's now unfortunately deceased, 
uh, was all about how two to three percent of your market's in an active buying cycle, but then that 40 percent that's susceptible to looking. So if you just execute a traditional cold calling approach, guess who you're going to find? The two to three percent. But you're not going to find much of anything when it comes to the 40 percent. So talk about the obligatory call there, Chad. Yeah, so this one's a little controversial. My good friend Chris Beal uh, sort of likes shorter syllable words, and but I'm going to call it out. It took me five years to discover this. So some companies call it the follow-up call. Other companies call it voice nurture. Whatever you want to call it, I'll call it turning your your second conversations into 15 to 20 percent conversion rates. And and what happens is this: you talk to the person the first time. No, I'm busy, and they hang up on you, or they give you very little time to talk, but you politely say, no problem, Natalie, I'll call you back in the, at another time. Now you get that person back on the phone, they're still busy, but you've maybe sent them an email in the interim, and you get them back on the phone, hey, Natalie, I'm glad I caught you. Last time I talked to you on a Friday, you were headed out. In fact, I think you said you had a doctor's appointment. I sent you an email like I promised that I would. How's, how's now for a few, for a few minutes? That call, she feels entirely obligated to have the call. I've got several that you'll hear and see today. You'll see some where there's no obligation required, and you'll see some and hear some where there is obligation required. The obligatory call, the follow-up call, it's amazing when you put this power into your pipeline. We are going to do it right now. And, and before we do, it's worth noting that Jared is in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and, and Chad is in Denver, Colorado. So I got just the right game tape for you guys. All right. Yeah, we're gonna get used to that zero on the on the DEN side a little bit. I think throughout the rest of this year, unfortunately. Uh, I love Perfect. it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Let's let's get into it. So first of all, we're gonna listen to Aaron um, and Chad. What are we hearing here? Yeah. So you're gonna hear Aaron. <clears throat> you know, very new to. Uh, very new to sales, has came from a solutions consultants type of role. Um, this is a typical call, right? They're kind of cold. They're turning you back. They're saying, yeah, not really interested. But then Aaron continues to probe and finds out that all important piece of information. So check this out. This is Aaron with Talent Reef. Did I catch you at an okay time? Uh, from, from where? Uh, Talent Reef. Can you tell me what Sure. Um, so Talent Reef is a vendor partner of Dunkin' Donuts, and we provide an end-to-end -end software solution, making recruiting and hiring easier. Um, so I wanted to check in with you to see if you have any talent management um, or, you know, digitization uh, goals for the end of the year. We need a little bit of Okay. Um, okay, and do you mind me asking what you guys are doing today for your applicant tracking um, and onboarding? We're using the more slides that we're going to do. If we do go, we can get the budget for the city to unify. Okay. It's in the system, but you, you can try it. That's the classic, try me in six months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And think about the data that she got about this person is, hey, even if we had a budget, we're going to buy a different product. So back in my early sales training days, is this person a plus or a minus in the type of people that you want to be talking to at this prospect? Probably a minus, right? Not a neutral, not a plus, a minus. So I'm probably going to go to someone other than this, because if I continue to bang my head against the wall on this person, I'm not going to get very far. So use the information about what they're using and take it to somebody who cares and somebody who, who can make a change. I did see, Jared, they used, uh, she did use your, what are you doing at the end of the year? And it seemed to work in this case. Yeah, she did. I made a note of that. And another thing that I made a note of that I, that I love and I always ask you know, our team to do is understand the status quo. You know, if, if not using me or a competitor, what are you doing? That's where the pain lives. Love it. All right. So look, Chad, where are we going next here with Reggie? So Reggie, uh, interesting, worked with me at a prior company, uh, has since joined. This was her very first call that she's ever made selling Talent Reef. So 
anybody who's sitting on the other side of this conversation who hasn't made a lot of calls for your company, you know, you may, she was, her, her pulse was sure, uh, you know, you could see the veins popping out of her neck when she made this call, but guess what? It turned into a really, really good conversation. So let's listen to the mechanics. Did I catch you in okay time? Um, sure. Okay, great. Excellent. Just uh, was hoping to get a better understanding of exactly what you guys are currently doing to um, source some of your candidates and, uh, and to get them onboarded. Okay. So, sorry, I'm thinking, are you a vendor or are you... Let's, let's pause there, Chad, because that comment's interesting. Yeah, see how there's a little bit of confusion. There's some grinding of the gears. That's not terrible because your goal of a call like this is to get them to pay attention to what it is you're talking about. At least we've gotten this person to kind of pop up from her screen, as LB would say, and now pay attention to your conversation. Um, however, if you could go into that, I catch you at an okay time and then move right into, hey, we're partnered with, you know, fill in the blank, rather than saying, what are you doing for? You haven't necessarily earned the right to ask that kind of a question yet. Right. If you cold called me and said, hey, Chad, um, I'm just calling to find out what are you guys doing for your, uh, you know, for your outreach right now? What are you guys using for, you know, for for that? I'd say none of your business. So make sure you earn the right by telling me, you know, what's in it for me. Use the so what's in it for me uh, messaging swift intro before you go into the questioning. Yeah. We're, we're a vendor. And so what talent reach is. We are a software application that helps you find and, and recruit top talent in the hourly workspace. Just curious to know what, what you're currently using. It looks like People Matter. Are you, how, how's that working for you? Are you happy with People Matter? Yeah, it's, it's working fine. It's not, it's having an office for us. We have to have it a little bit here, but it's fine. So pretty familiar with, with them actually. We uh, we come up. They're one of our top competitors. We come up against. Um, you know, one of the things I guess. Steve, pause there real quick. Big time. I may not say top competitor because you're giving them a little bit more credibility than they probably deserve. You might say, "Oh, that's interesting. That's a company that certainly comes up from time to time." Um, as as you'll find in talking with us. About 91 to 92 percent of the cases where there's a comparison done, companies end up choosing talent reef to solve this particular business case. Um, and specifically, then sh so add that rather than saying top competitor, yeah. and then push play, and you'll hear the rest. Her rest of this part is really brilliant. And this is what's so important: is the key to the whole call is that she mentioned people matter. If not for that, if not for having that pre-call research, this is probably going south. But let's let's listen to what happens. Are you aware of the acquisition or the merger with Snack Job and People Matter and how that relates to no. your posting? Okay, so have yeah, you found no. that have you found that since the acquisition that you've had a, a lower applicant flow? You know, I'll be honest with you, I think some of the recruiting, I don't want to see your entire process. I don't want to see metrics or anything that so I'm not the best person. That's probably a good point to uh, to pause and move to the next one. Steve, I saw you put something in there for anybody unfamiliar with the term FUD. What is that, Steve? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Jared, do you have any comments on FUD? I, I know you, you're a student. Funny, huh? Yeah, I know. That's a great. I was literally writing down FUD. This is my first year. You know, I've, I've not heard these calls, so I'm taking notes like, a, like I'm in a coaching session here. And I wrote down great FUD. So literally what you wrote is exactly what I wrote and you know understanding that people matter is at the table gives you a perfect opportunity to, to maybe put some fear uncertainty or doubt which which she did really well of so yes uh, FUD is crucial and it gives you permission to expand upon how you differ in that matter awesome all right Chad you want to jump to the next one or you want to keep going yeah let's do the next one uh, let's see we're gonna skip the uh, the punchline because the obligatory calls where we're getting um, let's go ahead and hear this 13-second uh, call where this guy Chad gets hung up on. <laughs> hey, and this is this is the key, guys. Everyone gets hung up on. If you're not getting hung up on, then you're not trying hard enough. Reef, did I catch you at an okay time? 
Uh, I'm in the middle of a meeting, so, um, yeah, and then my other phone's ringing. So, yeah. uh, no problem. I'll call you back. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Fine. Bye. Well, to be fair, Chad, you didn't really get hung up on there, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was nice. I did get to use her name. Um, you know, again, I'll go back to Chris because he's heard literally tens of thousands of conversations. He, uh, I, I think of him as the horse whisperer. He uh, learned at a very early age how to get a horse to comply with his hand gestures, and he's taken that into conversation management, I'll call it. And um, in this case, her hearing me and hearing my voice will now stick in her brain, right? It's programmed from tens of thousands of years ago as humans came into existence. And so that midbrain programs in that I've had a polite conversation within 250 milliseconds, she makes a decision if I'm a friendly or not. And she's gonna park that in her memory banks so that the call that I show you next becomes such an easy and what I call the obligatory call. I think it's also, so, I'm, glad, I'm glad you play this one, Chad, because it's good to play these for, for your team because, you know, we're not superheroes at any level uh, and everybody gets hung up on. But also, what do you see in your follow-up email from here? You probably see a reply uh, way more likely than you would because you caught her for a second. That's, that's definitely what we see at Ambition. Yeah, and you know, that's perfect. That's a great, it's not even, I didn't even plan to talk about that. When you talk to someone first, and then you customize the subject line in the first sentence to meet what it is you talked about. Hey, I caught you at a bad time. In fact, we were only able to talk for 13 seconds, and you, were, you had another call, and I understand you're extremely busy, and that's exactly why I'm sending you this email. Yeah, that open rate, that click-through rate, because you've first had a conversation, it'll go up 4 and 5x. So very, very good point, Jared. You know, before, before we go to the to the punchline of the obligatory call to hear how it's executed, I think it's important that we talk about the science. I love that you talked about this the brain science of the of the, your voice, the sound of your voice being programmed and actually wired into the midbrain. It's fascinating. There is a book that I've referenced, I think probably a half dozen times over the two years of Call Camp, called Influence by Robert Cialadini. Uh, cannot recommend that book enough. If you're out there listening to this, write down that book. It is required reading for all salespeople. In fact, I even have a, a Steve Richard reading list, which are the top 10 required sales books. I posted a blog on it. That's one of the, book, one of the books. And I picked it up from John Barrows. And the, the thing about uh, obligation, he calls it the, the weapon of influence, one of the weapons of influence. I don't really like that term. I, I call it uh, the science of persuasion. But the whole idea behind this is that creating obligation, it's a very, very powerful force. It's like magnetism, magnetism. It's like gravity. It's hard for human beings to resist that obligation. And that's why this lesson is so effective. It's kind of like Steve having me on this conference call. If I go to buy conversation automation anytime soon, <laughs> I may feel obligated to buy from ExecVision. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Chad. All right, let's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Tom. Uh, no, really, it's Friday, and I'm trying to get things done uh, for at least for the weekend. So it's a really bad. <laughs> I caught you last time on a Friday. I should learn because next time, I'll, what's a better day to reach you? Because I think that's what I caught you last time. Uh, right now, we're trying to work doing new companies and payroll. So this whole rest of the month is very bad. <laughs> Hang on, let's stop there on this Tom Stearns comment. A good friend of both of ours, Chad. What 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 did you hear about from him? Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what Jared said earlier, right? And it's funny. This is where this goes back to my comment about drift. I've programmed in, did I catch you at an okay time? And 20 years ago, through Sandler training, I heard a cube mate always ask the question, um, is now a bad time? And I heard the answer come up a lot that he didn't get through. <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically writing this down because when Jared tells me that it works, when Tom Stearns tells me that it works, I'm actually using this to kind of convince myself that I need to <laughs> I need to at least try, did I catch you at a bad time? Because to be honest, in 20 years, I've never actually put it into my repertoire. I, I heard it from uh, from uh, Mark Cranny and Dreesen, like Andreessen Horowitz, like sales camp, and uh, had never done it before, changed it, and immediately saw an impact. So 
it's different for everybody. It definitely depends on those personas you mentioned earlier, who you're calling matters. Uh, so sprinkle it in there, see what happens. Yeah, hey, I'm trying it, believe me. You heard it here. By this time next week, I'll have information and data on uh, whether it worked for sales hack or and not. That's a key. None of us should talk about how we feel or what we think. We should talk about what works based on measurement. Just a quick comment here. I'm not quite at the Chris Beal Sensei level, but I'm, I'm like a mini Sensei. Um, where I've probably listened to about 5,000 calls myself. Um, and what, what I can tell you is this: the beginning of the call is a very personal. The catch them at hello is a very personal thing where once you get it right, and actually a guy named Art Sobchak that we know well, the author of Smart Calling, awesome guy, Art describes it in his book as being like a backswing in golf. You know, Jim Furyk has a very awkward, funny backswing, but he's an excellent golfer. So once you've got that groove and you're in that good rhythm, groove in a good way, like that rhythm, just stick with what's working and keep doing it if you've got your 94% down. If you don't, you gotta, you got to switch it up and find it. Precisely. <laughs> I'm running two payrolls. We're setting up a new system and HR account. Uh, so well, that's not what I was calling about. Talent reach plugs into those systems. So we certainly... That, let's not let that transition be lost on the audience here, Chad. Talk about that transition. Yeah, well, look, if, if you're a typical rep, you, especially if you're customer service focused, you're going to let her talk over you, run the conversation, and you're going to be right back where you started from the last time at 13 seconds, maybe in this case 43. But notice I talked a little bit over her, right? This is obligatory. She's told me no and I've politely called her back. At that pivotal moment, just listen how I talk over her a little bit. Let's play that one more time. Yeah, that's a great segue here. We're setting up a new system and HR uh, so we're Well, that's not what I was calling about. Talent reach plugs into those systems. So we certainly Pause one more time. Think about when you're on a cell phone these days, there's some pause built in or a webinar like this one or a go to meeting or a WebEx or whatever ring central application you're using. There's always that little tiny infinitesimal delay. When I is when there's that pregnant pause and I jump in to kind of steer the conversation of the purpose of my call at that 40, 37 second mark, that's OK, because there people are used to it now. There is that little tiny little bit of delay. So jump in, take control of why you were calling and get the call back on track to what it is you're, you're attempting to do, which is book a meeting. And I think even right before that, you know, you might not even realize you did it, but you got her to laugh. Like she's now, you know, she's communicating with you on a different level because you got her to laugh. I think it's crucial. 100%. Yeah. And the Chris Beal four hour session the other day, that's exactly what he pointed out on this call. Yep. She's laughed and that's the uh, horse whisperer move <laughs> yeah, that's in, in human terms. One of the things that we're going to start measuring here is laughter um, in, and how it impacts uh, outcome performance. So that's going to be interesting research I'll be forthcoming. Let's go back in here one more time and we'll play it through. Two payrolls for setting up a new system and HR accounts. Uh, uh, well, that's not what I was calling about. Talent reach plugs into those systems. So we certainly, timing wouldn't be good now, but a lot of times those payroll systems uh, aren't as has tuned up to help you find great candidates and then process all the I-9 paperwork and, and that kind of thing. So that's what Talentry does. We have about 70,000 people around the country. Um, okay, we're projecting. We probably like to see something just say to our on payroll. <laughs> on board yeah. to find information because we're with people that matter right now. Yeah, that's uh, that's the biggest competitor in about. Eight. Ooh, I did what I said not to do. <laughs> biggest competitor. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Don't say the word competitor. If you're out there listening, never say the word competitor. Okay, but let's, <laughs> let's go back to the thing that works really well here. <clears throat> um, I want to make sure this lesson isn't lost. We talked about the three percent that are in an active buying cycle. This woman is absolutely not in the 3%. However, she's absolutely in the 40%. They have a lot of latent pain. They've got a lot of latent frustration and struggles. You heard the sigh. I maybe just coined a new term here on my previous comment. I said, great job reacting to her pain sigh. Anytime pain you hear someone, 
Whenever you hear that sigh, oh, that's such a great indicator. And if you not an opportunity, ah, if you can't win after that pain sigh, get out of sales. <laughs> get get out of sales. So what you did that was that was so effective here is when I like she said we definitely would probably like to see something. That's great language. I love it. Um, is that you got the forty percent? Jared, comments on that. Uh, I mean, I, I think it was great. I don't know if I have anything immediately. I love the definitely would probably, um, and I think that's that's a door opening if I've ever heard one. Um, so no, nothing too much to to build on that, Steve. Okay, that that's so. Let, let, let me let me comment on the follow ups here. So what what you're seeing here, again, this took me two and a half years of leading Connect and Sell. Then a year and a half at Ring Central, where I took the team to hundreds of thousands of dials and conversations, and I never got it right. It took me that many years, and now I've been with Talent Reef for the past hundred days. And it finally hit me when Chris Beal posts on his blog every single day on LinkedIn, he posts these high conversion rates where most people look at it and say, That is absolutely ridiculous. It's unbelievable. How is it you're converting 10 to 12% of all of your phone conversations into a meeting? And so one day I finally asked him, I said, Chris, you got to tell me, what, what is this? Are, do you have Glenn Gary leads or what the hell are you doing that's so unique? Why nobody else can get to 10 and 12%? And he said, Chad, 55% of the list that I give to my sellers are follow-up conversations like you're hearing right here. I was like, 55%? He said, yeah, we, we put in net new leads and net new contacts once a week. It's like putting new fish in the pond, right? You don't know what fish you're getting versus these follow-up folks. These are people you know are using a competitor. They're the right person. They have a phone that works. All of the characteristics of the people you want to be talking to. These are the biggest fish in the pond. When I go fishing to Alaska and I catch 40 pound salmon or 150 pound halibut, if I knew that the part of the ocean had the bigger fish, that's where I'm going to go. And that's what it, that's what happens when you do these follow up tasks. It's just astounding. So now my team's at 35% follow ups, 65% cold. And guess what? I'm going to be like Chris and I'm going to get that to a 55% follow up level so that I'm unique from my competitors. My competitors flood email boxes. I'm different because I actually go old school and I actually empower phone conversations. You're unique when you can talk to somebody the first time, whether they hang up on you or not, the next time you call on the obligatory call, you're going to get meetings out of it. That little human connection, that little human connection, what's a better, oh, I know last time I caught you on Friday too, When's a better day of the week? That little human connection, the little laughter, the, oh, we're implementing this, and then that pain sigh and connecting those dots is so human, and you're never going to replace that in email. You're never going to replace that with artificial intelligence. You're never going to replace that with a bot. You're never going to replace that with, you know, dollar an hour people in the Philippines. You're just not. It's, it's just a, it's a subtlety. It's a skilled thing. Let's go to the questions here. There are a lot of really good questions here that, that we can ask. Um, hey, can we finish with one more at the top? Yeah. I want to play the first 30 seconds of Cody's call because I just want to hammer the nail in here and make it flush on the follow-up. Absolutely. Follow Absolutely. Hold on. Let's go to Cody's. By the way, some people have been saying you're having some trouble hearing. I'm trying to play with the volume. It's a little bit tricky um, because these calls were all recorded at different volumes, so I'm messing with it as much as I can. Uh, if you have trouble Go ahead and put it in there. And questions. People have asked, can I ask a question? Yes, ask questions. We're about to go to a whole bunch of questions. We'll play some more calls, too. Here we go. Travis? Hello. Yeah. Hi, this is Cody with Talent Reef. How are you? Not too bad. And you? Hey, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I know I kind of reached, reached out blind. Is this an okay time? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to reach out and see if you had the chance to uh, review that email that I sent over with the information about our system. You know what? I haven't. Um, you're not a town, or I just got out of town this week. Oh, no worries. You, you can go over it real quick if you want. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I believe that's true. So, what, what, I, what I sent over was just in regards to basically a general overview of, of how Talent Reef works and how we're supporting numerous Jimmy Johns companies like your own uh, with, with their hiring. So, we take a little bit of a different approach than, let's say, like a snag a job. 
or an Indeed does, as, as we have strategic partnerships with companies like Indeed and Glassdoor. So we would start at the very beginning and we build you out an individualized branded career stage with Jimmy John's branding and elements that really differentiate you as an employer. Uh, we'll also push out all of your jobs to like Indeed, for example, you have unlimited and free postings out to Indeed through our system uh, with the Indeed Apply functionality. So it uh, makes everything really easy and convenient for those applicants to apply. Uh, one of our clients actually just went up with this feature and they saw four times the boost in applicant flow. Uh, just Woo! Chad, what do you hear? I mean, uh, this guy was a a rep at a car company and actually I think he became a manager at one point if I'm not mistaken and it, and it wasn't just any car company it was BMW and they teach you how to be very eloquent with your customers when they come in so it's not like um, I won't even use another brand name but it's BMW he brings that same demeanor and ability to tell stories and get inside the head of the prospect I mean look at that a minute and 32 seconds this is a living and breathing email <laughs> because most people try to have these kinds of conversations through email. My goodness, I'd so much rather have the ability to tell these stories. This guy's going to walk out of here and he's going to say, wow, yeah, we are using Indeed. You're going to get me four times as many applicants? This sucks right now because the world of hiring people in a 2% unemployment rate, it's hard. 4x more candidates, that's a good thing. And he goes on for eight minutes and 47 seconds to where at the end of this call, this influencer says, wow, can we schedule a call with the director of operations? I'd like to talk tomorrow because this is exactly on our radar for next year. So this is probably, this is in the 3%, but most people would have walked from the first time when this guy, you know, said, no, nah, you know, I'm really busy right now. This is where the magic happens in call number two and three. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, Jared, any comments here? Uh, yeah, a few. I, Cody, I wrote down immediately. He sounds friendly and he sounds very confident. He 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 commanded this phone call from the one thirty. I I heard. Um, you know, he acknowledges reaching out blind and got permission to continue. That was the second thing I wrote down. And he references an email. And because he referenced an email that a guy probably felt bad he hadn't gotten back to, um, he gives them the floor to to now you know speak to him and sell to him. Um, and then he drops Indeed, which is a recognizable name that the guy engaged with. So. You know, four things off the bat that just sounded very professional and, again, very human. Uh, you mentioned human on the last call. We always say be human and be a pro, and Cody sounds like a pro. And I'll pile on to that with the Jimmy John's <clears throat> reference. There's already, I guess, a, a relationship that talent we've inked with Jimmy John's corporate, and now you're calling the individual Jimmy John's franchisees. So everything about this call shows Cody – I understand your business. I understand what you're dealing with. I understand people like you. I understand the systems you have. I understand the corporate branding constraints. I understand the pain of being in a in a, a job market where it's hard to get candidates. I mean, everything about this shows that 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 he knows. Cody knows this guy's business. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I'm hoping it comes up in the Q and A. Uh, maybe we could talk about it here. How do you, you know, Steve, you had sent me a link to this, in fact, from a prior call camp. Um, a lot of times we'll exit from a call like this and we'll say, great, I'm so excited to show you. And then you look up their title and you say, oh, that's the um, that's the office manager that I just booked a demo with. Right. Yeah. What what are the top two or three things you guys would recommend of how do you invite the actual economic buyer and decision makers to these calls without being totally inappropriate? Yeah, and this is this is a big one. Um, I did a call camp on um, the exact opposite end of the cold call, at the very end of the cold call, and it was called. It was with Time Trade. It was called No No More No Shows. No More No Shows. And what we what we see with the research is that in very very small percentage, less than one percent of calls, do reps actually exhibit this behavior. Once you schedule an appointment, you have this incredible opportunity to gather all sorts of information. So asking things like who would feel left out if they weren't invited or who would uh, who else would be involved in this decision that should be present that day? And the way you transition is you say in order to make the best use of your time, people will call these button up questions at our friends at buy appointment only. That's what they call them, button up questions. Hey, Chad, in order to make this a good, good use of your time, you mind if I ask a couple real quick questions? And you're asking that sure. after you scheduled the meeting. 
Who would feel left I, out if they weren't included? Um, you mentioned that right now you're posting on Indeed. What's your experience been like? What other frustrations have you had? Can I get your cell phone number to send you a text? Even better, this is even better. We caught this in the wild one day and we started doing backflips. Jared, a lot of people prefer that I send them a text message the day of the meeting. What's your cell? And then people go, yeah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, sure, here's my cell phone number. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, if you ask me that, and guess what? I buy technology, and the best software sellers ask. And I tell them, oh, yeah, Brad Swingruber, he's my peer. He's a VP who runs this particular market for us. And then ultimately, probably our president and COO, and then the CEO will get involved. And the best sellers, Insight Squared, I'm in a sales cycle with. He said, and how do I spell how do I spell Ty's first and last name? And is the email the same setup as yours? T Casperger at, and then John, you said John Rader. I'm looking on LinkedIn right now. Is it R A E D E R? Yes, that's correct. Now he, he has that. And I wasn't, I was totally comfortable sharing the information. Ask. That's beautiful. Let's play real quick this swift intro. Then we'll go to Q and A. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. Uh, tell me what you want to play. Right, how about right from the beginning? It's not that long. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Lanier, uh, I talked to this morning. He just got back from vacation, funny enough. And I said, hey, is it okay to play one of your calls? And uh, LB said, it's fine to showcase the Swift intro. You know, this was a lot of heavy lifting with, uh, with the folks at Factor 8 because we had some programmed in tendencies to say, you know, the, the worst tendency was, hey, uh, hey, Jared, um, I'm calling because a note was passed to me that I was supposed to give you a call. Did I catch you? To, and I was like, uh, who gets a note on their desk? You're lying to the customer right out of the gate. And if you ever get a call from people, you may still hear that every once in a while because drift happens and it's hard to manage to. But check out how Lanier does it after the Swift intro class by Factor 8. Central. Oh, yeah. With Swift Central? Green Central? Green Central, yeah. Uh, Mark, I'm actually calling today because we are helping companies migrate their uh, PDF solutions to a cloud-based form system. Get more control over their communication solutions. I want to touch base with you, Mark, and learn where are you in that process? Um, I think I'm just investigating and just finding out more information. Gosh, okay. What has you investigating a new uh, solution? I just heard a little bit. I'm not really looking at a new form. I'm just looking at it in terms of uh, what is it, what do you have to offer, and all that kind of stuff. Information. Just Steve, you could pause it there. Oh, Think of what we topic this. Catch them at hello. 17 seconds. This guy knows exactly why Lanier reached him out of the blue. And he knows what's in it for him. We help companies migrate their, you know, their systems to the cloud. Where are you in that process? Notice it's not a yes or no question. It's an open-ended question. Tighten up your first 17 seconds. Get the opener, get to 94% success rate, get to the second 10 seconds. All it takes is 17 to 30 seconds, and you can be like Lanier, you can be like Cody, you can be like Aaron, you can be like any of these folks. But if you let it just happen, I can guarantee you, you're going to have conversion rates at 2 to 3% like the rest of the world. Go after the 40% gang. That's the theme on Call Camp. And how do you do it? You catch them at hello and do all the things that Chad just taught. That obligatory call is great. All right, so let's go to the let's go to the questions in the chat. You know, just, we got a lot of uh, a lot of fan mail over here, Jerry. We got to go through it all. So first of all, um, yeah. when someone say "Go Cowboys," I don't think any of us can get behind that. So we're gonna just disregard that comment. Um, then let's see what else we got here. Um, I had someone ask Jeff asked, "What's your email subject line to that email after you got hung up on?" Um, yeah, great question. It's let me give you a story from two years ago. I caught somebody in their driveway and they were shoveling snow and their company was going through a reorg and they were in New Jersey. I remember it clear as day. And the guy said, you know what? We're going through a reorg. It's now whatever, November. Call me back in, in uh, April and we should be fully through the reorg and then I'll point you in the right direction. And so the email in that case, be as specific as you possibly can. Subject line, caught you in a snowstorm. Um, and then, you know, first two sentences, Hey, Jared caught you in a snowstorm. You asked me to call you back in April. 
um, I'll definitely put a reminder to give you a call at that time. If it's okay with you, um, I'd like to touch base with you in January because sometimes things have a way of changing with reorgs and they happen sooner than we might expect. So here's my data in the meantime and expect to hear from me in January. Excellent. Simple. More, so Jeff, more specific you can get the better. Jared, any other tips on that or is that good? Um, like, like the example of the one where you know, the lady was in the, the meeting, kind of got off the phone, you know, I would say subject, you're in a meeting and then they open it pretty quickly on their, everyone's opening email on their mobile anyways in meetings. So just acknowledge you're in a meeting and that you knew it was a bad time and ask for, you know, permission to set up a new call and or send them more information. And Steve, I do like to, with, with these tools like outreach and sales loft these days, I mean, I build out a sequence for those um, so that the system automates right i do the first email very custom and then three days later it auto sends another reply to the custom email hey see below just looking to get to the top of your inbox and then i have a call task and connect and sell to make sure that i get this person back on the phone as you saw occur i'm making sure that i've got multi-channel totally optimized and totally accelerated so that there are no lead left untouched and no lead left behind we do the exact same thing. Like we do have two called the one for free and the three for free. And those are just free, you know, bubble up your inbox uh, emails that everybody should be doing, in my opinion. Love it. Uh, I've had some questions about some of the things that were referenced. Um, Walter asked about the 10 books, the sales books. Uh, Walter, just check out the, uh, uh, the chat and you'll see what to Google. I don't have the link handy, but if you just Google Steve Richards sales books or something like that, You'll find it. You can throw Exec Vision in there. It'll be the top link. And Rich, I wrote the book down, Influence by Robert Cialadini, C-I-A-L. If you Google Influence book, it'll probably be the first thing that pops up as well. So go yeah. check it out. Uh, Influence is great. And I actually made a note real quick, Steve. Uh, I was going to gonna chime in earlier. We moved pretty quick. But Pitch Anything, uh, FBI Negotiator book, fantastic. Add it to you guys' list. And Folks on the call, it's, it's a good one if you're into, into this kind of books. Chris Voss, fellow, fellow Georgetown Hoya. Love Chris. Fantastic book. That's interesting because Beal was telling me a similar one, and it happens to be by the same author. I think it's called Never Meet in the Middle. Yeah, I think Never Split the Difference. I think it's the same. Never same Split the book. Difference. Yep. And I've got that sitting on my desk at home ready to be poured into. Uh, Michael had a good tip. He said, is there anyone else in your company that might be interested in the conversation? So if the language is a little bit too forceful around who else is involved in the decision or who else would you like to include or uh, would anyone else feel left out? You could ask, is there anyone else in your company that might be interested? FOMO, by the way, fear of missing out is, is a powerful. Uh, I like that left out because I hear too many times. Is there anyone else that might be interested? Now you're asking me to go sell internally versus anyone would feel left out, I'm going, yeah, dang it, Brad would feel left out if I didn't invite him. Versus it, the other way that it's asked, then I feel like, okay, I've got to go sell Brad on bringing him into the Insight Squared meeting. Now, would, would anybody feel left out? I would be more likely to, uh, to get somebody. Uh, Chris, and I'm not going to even ask the question. I'm just going to this. Chris Beal, uh, he's out there listening, Chad. He said once I'm established, isn't it okay to say biggest competitor? I don't know, Chris. I mean, you're the sensei, so we're going to have to ask you next time we're, we're hanging out at a AAISP conference or something like that. That would be great. Um, hey, I just go back to it's just math. If it works, and by the way, in both of these conversations, it seemed to have worked. So maybe that's not, uh, not a terrible thing, and maybe I invented my own level of drift, as they say. <laughs> so... That's why we do these call camps because we all learn from each other and we continue to move the ball down the field. So drift is choose your bad. mentors bad. wisely. Drift, drift is bad, but but spontaneous mutations are good. That's how evolution happens is through spontaneous mutations. So you definitely want to have those little spontaneous mutations, and then when you figure out one that works really well that that you can measure, then you go all in and you try to stay on that and not drift. Now this is an interesting one from Akolka. Very interesting. She said. She said, on Cody's call, it almost seems like he's feature selling. What do you recommend in terms of lifting, listing off features of what you do versus selling the dream, in quotes, of what you're selling? Well, look, I, I think that's a very good perspective, and, and you're in tuned into the conversations. Features tell, benefits sell. Um, 
again, it depends on your level of buyer. This particular person is pretty entry level on the totem pole and bringing in the director of operations. In those cases, this person, it's okay to have a little bit more feature conversation. Now notice he peppered in some things like, uh, I, I think he said the reduction in annual turnover, making it simpler and easier for managers to hire. So remember that you're, you have to align it to the persona and who it is you're working with. Are they, as my friend Skip Miller would say, are they above the line, an ATL buyer or a below the line buyer? This person was a BTL or below the line, in which case it's probably okay to have a little bit more feature heavy conversation. An above the line buyer, you want to stay as much about the, you know, I give you a dollar and you give me 10 back. That's really what I care about. I don't care about all your features. I care about the benefits of what it is you provide. All right, so here's two more good ones, and then we're going to wrap it up here because there's so many we can't answer them all. I mean, we could we could do an inside sales town hall like this call camp like every day of the week. It's uh, this is great stuff. Anyway, James asked you you always reference the email before letting them know why you are reaching out. Man, that's you know, there's a guy named Frank Swain who was the VP of Sales at App Dynamics, and now he's a a big wig over at a company called Instana, and they're uh, knocking the teeth out of the competition. Um, his advice is that a lot of sellers have a feeling that because they send the email, they're going to get lift in their sales conversation. And that his view on it, and my view over the past several years, is that you actually don't get lift on that conversation. As you've heard the calls today, whether I've sent you an email or not, um, but however, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you think you're going to get lift and it causes you to have a more effective conversation, as you saw with Cody, because he sent the email, he actually did what he said he was going to do. Now I do believe that can get lift because he checked the box on something that he promised. But when you're sending cold emails and you say, hey, did you happen to see the email that I sent you last week? You're going to get 99% of the time, no, I don't know what you're talking about. What's this about? Now that in Craig Kleeman terminology, that smells like sales stench and you want to stay out of that sales stench at the beginning of a call and ease your way into it and catch them at hello. So that's my personal opinion on it, but uh, you guys may have a different perspective. Bye. I think, I think that's it. I think that's all we have time for, actually. There's so many other good questions. Some people have been asking about gatekeepers. Josh, go check out uh, the call camps. If you go to execvision.io slash webinars, you'll see all the call camps. We've done several call camps specifically on gatekeepers and how to get information from them and handle them differently. Um, and then uh, Grace asked a question about last question. One more, Chad. If you're not able to catch them the first time, how many times do you call back until you give up? Yeah, man, I've seen deals close for a million dollars where it's taken over 100 dial attempts and multiple conversations. So it really depends on the size of your prospect. If it's a three location deal in our terminology, that's probably $3,000 a year. I'm not going to invest 100 dial attempts against you. If you're 100 locations and you're at Jimmy John's, because a lot of other Jimmy John's are satisfied clients and that's a hundred thousand dollar transaction, man, it's worth putting in a little bit of extra intensity in phone, phone conversations and dial attempts. Beautiful. Beautiful. Everyone, if this was helpful for you, we ask you one thing, please next month for call camp, by the way, we had 480 people register for this. That's pretty darn good. And I think it shows that there's an undercurrent in the marketplace of people are tired of fake. We don't want role play. We don't want, phony baloney, you create a video with some fictitious example. It's time for real. It's time for us to understand what's happening on real conversations with real prospects and real buyers when they throw you real curveballs. So if you found this helpful, invite three of your friends to the next call camp and let's make this movement absolutely explode. Everyone, you're also welcome to connect with all three of us on LinkedIn. Jared, Chad, and Steve. Uh, I'll put our, our mugs back up on the screen real quick just so you can see them. So please connect with us on LinkedIn and uh, be sure to share Call Camp with your friends. Tell them about next episode. If you want any specific topics, I'm always trying to find new topics, new calls, uh, new interesting themes. 
let me know. Send me an email, steve at execvision.io. Pretty easy, steve at execvision.io. Tell me what you want. We give the people what they want here on Call Camp. Jared, thanks for your time. Chad, you were awesome. As Kleeman would say, peace, cheers, we are out. Peace, we're out. Have a good one. Ha, 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 ha.